A GPS approach is a non-precision approach. This one, the GPS runway 29 into Bay Bridge Airport, uses LNAV minimums. This means lateral navigation. The GPS produces a course to follow to the airport, which is in some ways like a localizer on an ILS approach. It doesn't include any vertical guidance like a glide slope would provide. Some approaches, like the approach to the other runway 11 at the same airport, do incorporate vertical guidance and allow for lower LPV minimums. This can be used if your GPS is WAS enabled, allowing for more precision. However, if you have a WAS enabled GPS and you're not shooting an LPV approach, like our original approach into runway 29, you might still be able to have some form of vertical guidance. The GPS will compute an advisory glide path. The keyword here is advisory. Unlike a precision approach or an LPV approach on a GPS, there's no guaranteed obstruction clearance if you follow the vertical guidance all the way down. That guarantee is only good above the MDA. Going below the MDA still requires runway visual cues. Also, the FAA doesn't design or sanction an advisory glide path. You won't find it on the government approach plates. It's produced by Jeppesen and provided to vendors like Garmin for their GPS units. It's computed based on a visual descent angle from the threshold crossing height. Many pilots choose to fly non-precision approaches using a continuous descent final approach. What this means is that a constant descent rate is maintained from a particular point which allows the aircraft to arrive at the MDA in a good position to continue the descent to land. It's the alternative to a traditional dive and drive, where the aircraft repeatedly descends and levels off at step-down altitudes. Without any indication on FAA approach plates, how do we know if we'll be able to use an advisory glide path on our next LNAV approach? Well, if you have Jeppesen plates, you can see if there's a dashed line that extends down to the missed approach point. Any guidance below the MDA is strictly advisory, so Jeppesen is indicating that they've added that in. Approaches that don't incorporate the advisory glide path won't have that dash line, like on this approach. On your WASP GPS, you can have a look if an approach uses the advisory guidance. Here on the G1000, when you pull up the procedures page by pressing the PROC hard key and hitting enter to select approach, the approaches are listed. The RNAV to 1-1 uses an LPV. We don't need an advisory glide path for that one because the glide path is an official part of the approach with all the obstruction clearance that comes with it. The GPS into runway 29 is an LNAV, but that plus V right there means that it comes with vertical guidance from the advisory glide path. If it just said LNAV, we wouldn't have that guidance. We'll select this approach, start it from Zackley, the initial approach fix closest to us, fly it straight in, set our minimums to 480, remember they don't change just because we have vertical guidance, and activate it. As we fly inbound, we approach the final approach fix, ASLAM. The advisory glide path will pick up from that point. If we arm glide path mode, which we've done here as shown by the GP on the enunciator, the autopilot will follow the guidance down, keeping the magenta diamond centered. We're still responsible for all minimum altitudes. There is a step down fix, Zipby, that we need to cross at or above 740. The visual descent angle that the advisory glide path is using will allow us to satisfy that step down altitude. We're also responsible for stopping our descent at the MDA. Upon reaching the MDA of 480, we hit Alt to level us off. If we don't have sight of the runway, we hold this course until the missed approach point and then execute our missed approach climb and turn. Sometimes it's said that an advisory glide path doesn't guarantee you'll meet crossing minimums at step down fixes, like we did at Zippy on this approach. This is not the case. This is the RNAV GPS Yankee runway 23 at Frederick. Notice on the Jeppesen that it also has a dotted line extending down to the missed approach point, indicating the advisory glide path on this LNAV approach. However, notice that after the final approach fix, Shui, that line stays level for a moment before beginning its descent a bit after. This is done because using a visual descent angle that started at the final approach fix would cause us to bust the step down altitude at Zytum, or otherwise would require two different angles, one for before the step down and one for after. Neither of those is how advisory glide paths work. They correct for this instead by delaying the descent until after the final approach fix, which we can see as we fly the approach. Let's say you don't have Jeppesen. Is there any way you would know that there's a delay in picking up the advisory glide path on this approach? There is a clue on the FAA plates, it turns out. These glide paths are computed based on visual descent angles, and the FAA plate does often publish these. 
On this approach at Frederick, it's indicated after that step-down fix to show that it's only on this segment that this angle applies. Typically though, you'd find the symbol just after the final approach fix, indicating the angle applies to the entire final approach segment. So even with a high step-down fix crossing altitude, you should still be able to fly a continuous descent angle using the advisory glide path. Let's see that in action. We pass the final approach fix, shooey, and the diamond doesn't come down to center where we begin following it down until a bit afterwards. As we follow it down, notice that we do in fact pass over Zytum above the step down of 1020. And as we continue, we keep the same vertical descent speed, indicating we're still on the same angle. One last thing to note on advisory glide pass is that if we do get sight of the runway and continue below the MDA, we should no longer use the guidance of the advisory glide slope, but transition to the Pappy or Vazzy lights, since it's only those that provide obstruction clearance down to landing. The glide path is programmed to turn off at the missed approach point or 50 feet above the runway and indicate no GP so that we don't try to do what we're done here on the sim, which is land with the glide path guidance.